Recently, I participated in Ms. Jam 1 and submitted my first game ever. Defending Fort Kentstone, a no-rails tower defense game where you build towers, defeat enemies, and choose upgrades at the end of each round to empower yourself. The development of the game actually went really well as I would list down tasks every day to complete and hit them spot on every single day within the given time frame. I'm really happy with how everything just kind of worked out during the development phase and I'm really excited to participate in another game jam this year. Overall, I've ranked 235th out of the 683 participants. For my first game, I'm actually very satisfied with this, but this is definitely a ranking that I want to improve. So I'm going to talk about 5 things I felt like I did incorrectly during this jam and lessons learned so I can improve moving forward. Lesson number 1. My game was too long. My game took around 30 minutes to complete and while it felt like it was engaging enough upon submission for myself with the different enemies and upgrades, Many people validly expressed that this was simply not enough. As a rater in a game jam, you often feel like you're providing a service to a developer rather than just playing the games for fun, so when a game is unable to provide anything new or exciting for long periods of time, it just kind of gets boring. And this leads me to my second point. Lesson number two. Don't add complexity if you're not going to teach it well. In my game, there are 35 waves of enemies, 4 different enemy varieties, 5 difficulties for each of the enemies, 59 different upgrades, and 4 different towers with varying player speed and health. Now, I feel like I introduced the enemies really well and the upgrade system decently, but I definitely fell down with the towers. A criticism I gave to another developer and a criticism that I also got for myself was that I introduced too much at once. In many ways, on wave 1, there isn't really a need for the player to be able to build 4 different types of towers on the first wave. A much better way would have been introducing those towers as upgrades on various waves. Let's say, instead of getting upgrades on wave 3, I could have at least had a single card where you got to now build this type of tower. The card could have had an explanation of what the tower does, as well as just a freebie to allow the player to build that tower for free and to play with it. On wave 7 it could be the artillery tower, and on wave 12 it could have been the slow tower. This could have been a really good way as well of introducing these game changing differences in a game that really needed it to prevent it from stagnating. In many ways, my game ended up suffering from being a bit too overwhelming at the beginning, and a bit too underwhelming at the end. Lesson number 3. Art and marketing is really important. In most people's heads, including my own, it's not exactly surprising to understand that a game that looks good will get a lot more attention. Well, now I believe this in my heart. While not directly tied to making a better game, I do put the value of art and visual significantly higher than I once had before, to a point where that it may actually be worth considering sacrificing gameplay just to make the game look good. A lot of the games that I really enjoyed playing in the game jam actually got less ratings than I did, and a lot of the games that I didn't enjoy playing had like 5 times more people play them. I got most of my feedback simply by leaving detailed feedback on other people's games so they would hopefully play my own, and this actually worked. But in the future, I'd rather not do that. I guess this is my question. Is it better to make a slightly better game that a lot less people are going to play, or a slightly worse game that a lot more people are going to play? Well, Pretty much being firmly on the former for most of my life, 
I'm starting to shift my opinion to be on the latter now. Lesson number four. Difficulty needs to be forgiving. When balancing my game, I set myself up with the following idea. I want this game to be easy for myself while not being trivial. As a whole, I think I actually really succeeded with this balancing strategy, but I had a few issues with my game that led to the following situation. I had people tell me that my game was too hard, but I also had people tell me that my game wasn't hard enough. While it's easy to blame the player for being bad, I, the designer, am actually at fault. In my game, you can build any tower pretty much anywhere you want, and if your tower gets destroyed, you just lost your entire investment. So, imagine a player that works out a viable strategy from the beginning, versus a player that takes a while to finally work out a viable strategy. And they hit wave 10. On wave 10, the player who was struggling only has two towers and cannot possibly survive this wave. And for the latter, they have 20 towers built already, and if they went AFK, they would still totally be within the game. In short, I have created a snowball effect. And what is worse is that if you die, you have to restart from wave one and play through the entire game again. This creates a terrible experience for someone who pursued the wrong strategy early on. And often they're never going to be able to get out of that hole for their entire lives, while other players may think that the game is very easy. This is a fundamental flaw, and I don't actually have any easy solutions to fix this outside of exponential scaling but the balancing needed to make that work is just not viable for a game jam. I think that in the future, I just need to make sure that I'm careful about giving the player as much freedom to screw themselves over as I did with this game. Lesson number five, quirks and charm are important. Many of the top games told a short story or had these very small moments where you could see a tiny bit of character added to the world. I don't know if you would call this immersion or simply soul. While I may not appreciate this as much as other players, it is clear that by the comments, people really took note of these small details. Stuff like a dog panting over the greet you won a lot of people over, and while I compare this to my game, I definitely feel like I am lacking a lot of this soul. I have basic sound effects and music in addition to some extremely simple 2-4 to four frame animations, but that's really it. I did try and make my world a bit more real by adding a few more houses and trees to make it seem like it was a real home, but ultimately the map was too big for people to really notice. It's hard to say if adding these details is worth the effort all the time, but for many of the top games it was a good reminder that these small details make a big difference. And that's it. I'm interested to see how I can apply these lessons to my next game jam and if I'm able to successfully build upon them, but until then, have a great one, bye.